Hello everyone, my name is Charles the Marketing Maverick Davis. I want to welcome you to the Ultimate Brand Design Channel. Today we're going to be talking with Pete Hurd. I met Pete through our marketing good clients uh, university with Dan Henry and I reached out to him to do an interview because he has some really good information and about branding and business launching and i want you to introduce yourself pete you got the stage <laughs> yeah thank you so much charles for having me i'm super excited to be here with you man yeah this is great <laughs> yeah this is gonna be great this is gonna be great don't worry about it locking up. This software mm -hmm. is recording it locally and it's gonna upload itself later. Okay? Mm -hmm. Give me just That's one right. second, Charles. Sure. Give me one second. My kids are home, so they have this habit of, you know, just running into the room. <laughs> no, you know, I had to learn to integrate with kids, man. Um, you know, they're just like, I love it. They don't understand that daddy's on a call. So my four-year-old, she just loves to, to budge in and say, <laughs> and then, you know, you'd think it's something important, but very important to her. Daddy, I want juice. Can I have juice? <laughs> I got to love it. You got to love it. I, I understand it because when I was with my family and I'd be, I say, I'm home, but I'm not home. I'm home, yeah. but I'm not home. They, exactly. they never yeah. get it. They never get it. So you just right. something you have to integrate into it. So I truly understand, you know, and um, it's great to see. I got to be personal. It's great to see another African American coming out from behind the scenes. One of the things that I've noticed as an African American man, we need to this is where I put it. We need to get off the back of the bus and start driving the bus. Because right. today, because today, the opportunities are so great for those that are willing to just get out there. So, how did you get started, man? Yeah, so I, I actually come from a banking background. So um, I, I worked primarily from a banking background. Um, I quit that in 2019, but at the same time, uh, my pastor, uh, Paul, he has a marketing agency. So I've always like done some work with him and uh, was so intrigued with this whole marketing thing. So okay. um, when I quit my job back in 2019, I realized that, you know what, I, I, I need to do something and I need to do something quick. So I started freelancing and then I met my other friend, Jacob Salem, who I became certified um, under him as a digital marketer alongside the work that I was already doing for um, you know, Paul, who's um, my pastor with the marketing agency. Uh -huh. And after that, man, I launched my own agency. Um, okay. Launched my own marketing agency. And scaled that to multiple six figures, uh, did really well, and then um, and then I started getting burned out. It was, <laughs> you know, being new as an entrepreneur, you learn very quick that uh, you don't work a nine to five; you work a twenty four seven if you're not careful. Yeah. <laughs> so 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 go a little bit into that burnout piece. Why did you burn out? I mean, you could have scaled, grown it, sold it. Why why did you go that path? So, so for me, I never wanted to have like a big agency. I, I learned very on oh, okay. that. It wasn't my thing, right? So I didn't want the headache of hiring people and, you know, dealing with all of that, um, that stuff. It was always me and, um, you know, a couple of contractors that I work with uh -huh. and did good. So I think, um, you know, I've had clients that paid me upwards of 10K per month for services. And really? Yeah, so it did really well, but it was also one of those things where um, I realized that, you know, I didn't want to take away from my daughter growing up because that was uh -huh. the sole reason why I even, you know, quit my nine to five in the first place was to just really, 
be at home with my wife um, and spend more time with my daughter. So um, that wasn't happening. And I was like, you know what, I don't want that headache. So I kind of just um, slowed things down. And then instead I um, started consulting and doing some coaching. So instead of offering done for you work, I kind of started doing like done with you, the done with uh -huh. you model uh -huh. where I brought in my expertise and everything. Um, and then that did good. And then um, one of my a buddies recruited me to Deloitte Deloitte Consulting. Um, yeah. So they needed someone in their consulting marketing department to uh, help them out and mm -hmm. really um, serve at that brain for a lot of their clients. So I did that. Um, and then I also uh, wrote my book in the process. And um, I realized that, man, I'm just a kid, you know, um, you know, back then I was like, oh, I'm just a kid who just had a nine to five and left and I was able to do this. And I'm like, man, you know what? So many people can leverage their existing skills to, you know, um, outside of the workplace. And I was like, man, if you're a marketer at a nine to five, there's so many local businesses and brands that need marketing help. If you are a videographer, if you are a, whatever you are in a nine to five, if it's um, a skill that is in demand, you can use that skill and leverage that skill to make more money um, outside of your nine to five than you're making in your nine to five. So that's what my book was about, servicepreneurship. It was essentially on how to um, build a profitable service business, leveraging your existing skills. So okay. I did that and it was really good. So many people got a lot of value from it. And it was then that I realized like, man, you know, um, I essentially discovered something that, uh, allowed me to crack the code and, it's, <laughs> you know, it's like by mistake, I, I, I discovered this and I was like, man, so the fastest way to build credibility and authority and to also build a profitable client acquisition system is by becoming an author. Now there's different things that are involved in it. It's not as easy as it sounds, but I think when you look at the landscape of authority and the landscape of where we are today, that is mm -hmm. one of the fastest ways to, um, to if you're a service provider or a business consultant or even a business coach, right? And okay. if you're stuck, um, you know, what I was seeing is that a lot of people that were, I was coaching were just stuck at that fifteen to $30,000 a month mark. And they uh -huh. struggled to scale because they had inconsistent and, and, and um, inconsistent client flow. So one of the best ways to, to combat that is to build a predict predictable system where right. you distribute mass information at scale. And that's what a, book's a, a book allows you to do because you're not only tapping into your market, but you're also tapping into the, also the, the, the broader side of your market. So you're distributing information at scale, right? And um, you're keeping them in your ecosystem and nurturing them in the back end via a uh, lead automated um, in, um, nurture sequence. So the way so it hold works. Hold up, hold up, hold up. I got a question for you. Hold on. This darn thing here is getting on my nerve. Um, let's say I was to come into, let's say I want to hire you. What would you take me? Because you're talking about a book, uh, client lead acquisition. How does all that tie together? So, uh, yes, definitely. So if you are a business consultant, right, or a business coach, and you're stuck at $15,000 or $30,000 per month, and you want to go beyond that, Right. So some business coaches and consultants, they're fine at that level. They don't want to scale or go beyond that. Right. They're they're OK with that. But those that do want to scale to that 50K or even one hundred thousand dollars a month mark, those are the people that I normally work with. So if that was okay. if somebody that you wanted, if you wanted to come in, what the process that I'll go get, uh, take you through is the following. The first thing we do is I do an audit to see where you at, what you're doing, what's working, what's not working and where you need the most help. Right. The second mm -hmm. thing that we do is we look at your offer. The offer is everything. A lot of business coaches and consultants, they undercharge for their services. So a lot of times, right? A lot of times it's not even a client acquisition system that they have. They just have like this fear of charging what they're really worth, right? So one of, a lot of my clients, you know, um, I, I, I go through this. It's, it, it's like this mindset shift that they have to go through. Um, yeah. You will notice that a lot of consultants, like your $3,000 package can be a $7,000 package. Your $7,000 package can be a $15,000, even a $20,000 package. So the second thing that I do is I restructure their offers and I really get them to go through this uh, phase of believing in themselves. So 
So we would look at your offers, restructure your offers. Then the third thing that we'll do is um, do a done for you book and book funnel, which is where you package your expertise into a revenue generating and value driven book that we can distribute at scale in the marketplace. Right. And what that does is the only people that are going to be interested. So, for example, Charles, if you do a podcast or, or for example, we're in this podcast, if you write a book on here's how to add an extra five thousand dollars a month in your business by doing podcasts. Right. Let's just say for the sake of this interview, this is what. OK, OK, is. go ahead. Right. The only people that would realistically get that book are people that are interested in your what you're trying to, what you're trying to mm -hmm. teach them. So uh -huh. just like Alex Hermosi says, you, uh, you don't sell information. You give information for free. You yeah. sell the implementation, right? And that's what one of the models that, you know, we focus on is just sell implementation. You don't, don't sell the information, just sell the implementation because what, that, uh, what happens is when somebody gets your book, right. And they go through the funnel, they don't just become a lead. They become an engaged lead. Right. And that's okay. what um, Promosi talks about. There's a difference between a lead and an engaged lead. And those people, um, if they get your book and the, the part two of the funnel, they get the opportunity to book a call with you. Now, if they don't, that's fine because we have a 10 to 30 part email sequence in the back end that we're still nurturing them until they're ready to book a call. So that's exactly. how it's like a revolving door, revolving door that, um, allows you to keep your pipeline full. And then in addition to that too, the next thing we do, we do media pitches for our clients. We do um, podcast pitches where we'll get them a podcast and all of these things, they amplify that system that we're building for them. Right. Because right. on one side, they're, on one end of it, they're keeping their pipeline full. And then the other hand of it, they're amplifying their um, presence and visibility so people can keep that pipeline going for them. And essentially, it's like a self-revolving door. Okay, cool. You got a good, I, I got a really nice picture of that because I'm in the industry. Alex Hermosi, I, I, you know, the 100 million leads, I saw all that stuff. <laughs> but here's something, how do you develop, see, I'm, I'm, I'm on the brand strategy personality side and how mm -hmm. do you bring that into incorporating it into your personal brand? How does your system incorporate that? How does that how does that system incorporate into the personal brand? Yeah. So See, I because think... just, just, just so you understand, I looked at one of your posts, mm -hmm. right? And I said, no, this dude didn't. He didn't slap my grandmother. <laughs> you said this. I'm just being joking. You said business consultants get this wrong. That's how you started the post. I, I just left a comment on. It. I said, I didn't know. Here it is. Oh, wow. Uh, let, let that go. Um, anyway, hold on. <laughs> Little James Bond there. Yeah, yeah. Mission Impossible. That's how I know. Don't answer it. Don't answer it. <laughs> it, might, it might even be a sales call. I, I'm, just hold on. I'm going to let it finish, and then I'll cut this section out. Just hold on. Yeah, no problem. Okay. In the brand strategy community, mm -hmm. right, they bring us in to determine what is the branding strategy and archetype for the business. Okay. But there's also a personal branding component too, based on our psychology. Like for instance, uh, my brand dimensions are creative, adventurer, and sage. These are psychological components of our, my personality. There's 12 dimensions to it, but we lean into the ones that attract people. Okay? And so I looked at it, I say, okay, what, what is the pain point you're trying to solve for me? Okay? And that's, that's the correlation. I'm trying to put those two pieces together. Your turn. Yeah, so the pain point essentially that I solve for my clients is um, they're not necessarily, so my clients are successful already. Okay, so mm -hmm. um, the people that I work with, they're usually, um, you know, at one end, 
the one hundred and eighty thousand to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year in their business okay. already. Okay. Now the problem that they're facing is the inconsistent client flow, the inconsistent client acquisition. Right? Mm -hmm. Some months are hot, some months are cold. Yeah. yeah. Some months, some weeks their calendars are filled, some weeks it's not. And part of that is because they're relying too much. They have an over reliance on referrals and an over reliance on their network. Mm -hmm. And the way branding comes into place is what our system, what it does, it not only helps you build a predictable system that keeps your pipeline full, but it also gets you that increased visibility because one of the ways we do that is through the book that we write, right? So mm -hmm. we, through the book, we're, we're able to do media pitches for you. We're able to do podcast pitches for you. We're able mm -hmm. to get your interviews, right? Um, because people, we're still living in an information hungry world right now. Oh, right. Yeah. There, there is, uh, there, I, I would argue that there is a bit of over information, right? Or information overload in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. But when you create valuable and uh, valuable content, valuable information that people can digest, that's outmatch, right? Good content beats bad content 100% of the time. So that's mm -hmm. what we do. That's where the branding comes into place. And it's like, oh man, Charles just wrote this book. Oh, let me interview him. Let me see what this book is about. Um, and then use this book to get podcasts. So then it's like all of these things become a revolving door method where um, one feeds into the other, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. It does. Because it's like you're, you're at another end of this branding cycle, this, this, the phases. There's the becoming like, well, how do I transition from employee to entrepreneur? And then as you go up that ladder, you know, the book is on there, right? Once you started to make, are you familiar with Myron Golden? You should I be. love Myron. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, those, those are the ladders of brand strategy and how you build your business. Okay, I get that. So, you know, I, I, I see where you fit into this. And what I'm asking you with this question is, what do you think AI is going to do to all this? I think AI, a lot of people have been um, very afraid. So if, if that's the word I want to use of AI, or maybe very like skeptical of what it can do, I think AI is good if it's used correctly. I think AI will definitely help the way we do things. I think AI will definitely serve its purpose in making some of the things we do easier, right? But the thing is, AI does not have a human brain. AI does not have emotions. AI cannot do what a human can do, right? You think um, so? I think so. I think before, if it ever gets to that point, it'll be years down the line. Um, you know, it can, it can try to emulate a human. It can try to emulate what human capacities could be, but AI is, at the end of the day, it's still a robot. It's not human. See, being from the tech field now, you know, it's like, Pete, it's like, I'm talking about, I've been doing this since I was 16, and AI is considered the holy grail of technology. It was the whole point of them developing that stuff was to replace us. That's yeah. the goal. And yeah. I'm seeing some things. I saw some stuff in, in uh, Congress where they're using it to cut medical costs. It's doing some amazing things that right. we're, we're not even aware of yet. But anyway, right. we're at 18 minutes. This is your time to do your pitch because you're going on my YouTube channel. You're going to be going on LinkedIn. What do you want people to know? Yeah, so I think um, the biggest thing is for me, I, I, I love, I, I am so passionate about working with business consultants. And um, for me, it's a ministry. It's um, mm -hmm. it, it's what I love doing. Uh, I, I've been in this since 2019. So um, no, no, no pitch at all. But I think if you are a, a business consultant or business coach and you're just looking for a predictable and reliable client acquisition system and you're you know, tired of the feast or famine type days, you're tired of the, 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 the client droughts, Mm -hmm. um, you know, where mm -hmm. one month is great, one month is not, I can definitely help you change that around by building a predictable and reliable client acquisition system that 
not only keeps your pipeline full, but that also um, it helps you increase your visibility and your recognition in your space. Uh, because I think right now, um, you know, there's some players, there's a lot of players in the space. Some are legit, some are not. But regardless, Ooh, it's definitely, definitely you, tough you to you, the nose. You, Pete, I'm sorry for cutting you off. You, you hit on my uh, nerve. Some people, <laughs> in the sp- people in the space saying, well, we could do this. And you check them out, they can't do it. Yeah. You know, they, they don't have an idea. That, that's one of my, it's like, how do mm-hmm. we beat that i mean for us we're we're passionate about it we're about serving people right I'm really glad to hear you talk about your your faith because my other channel is called the god principles about Amen. living in the in the philippines and you'd be surprised every conversation that i've had for these interviews that's how they end up yeah they, they oh, end definitely. up about talking about their faith yeah so I'm, I'm glad to, that you went there. I'm glad we had this interview. Yes, I'm going to end it now at 20 minutes. You're going to have to stay on while it finishes uploading. I want to thank everybody. If this has been of value to you, you can reach Pete Hurd on LinkedIn. How do they reach you on LinkedIn? So um, it's uh, Peterson Harard on LinkedIn. Um, it's, I'm the only one with that name, so it's going to be very, very easy to find. <laughs> you're, not, you're not going to find a, a typical person with a, um, with Peterson as their first name. It's, it's, it's very rare unless yeah, they're Haitian. Yeah. Like I am. <laughs> oh, 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 you're Haitian too. All right. Yeah. All right. You learned a little bit more. Thank you, Pete. I want to thank everybody for watching. Click like, comment, and share. Follow him on LinkedIn.